Russia attacks Ukraine. Peace in Europe shattered. Russia has launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, unleashing airstrikes on cities and military bases and sending troops and tanks from multiple directions in a move that could rewrite the world's geopolitical landscape. Kyiv, Ukraine. Russia launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine on Thursday, unleashing airstrikes on cities and military bases and sending troops in tanks from multiple directions in a move that could rewrite the world's geopolitical landscape. Ukraine's government pleaded for help as civilians piled into trains and cars to flee. President Vladimir Putin ignored global condemnation and cascading new sanctions as he unleashed the largest ground war in Europe in decades, and chillingly referred to his country's nuclear arsenal. He threatened any country trying to interfere with consequences you have never seen. Ukrainian officials said their forces were battling Russians on a multiple fronts, and had lost control of the decommissioned Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Scene of the world's worst nuclear disaster. Russia has embarked on a path of evil, but Ukraine is defending itself and won't give up its freedom, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky tweeted. In Washington, U.S. President Joe Biden announced new sanctions against Russia, saying Putin chose this war, and that his country would bear the consequences of his. The sanctions will target Russian banks, oligarchs, state-controlled companies and high-tech sectors, he said, adding they were designed not to disrupt global energy markets. Russian oil and natural gas exports are vital energy sources for Europe. Zelensky urged the U.S. and West to go further and cut the Russians from the SWIFT system, a key financial network that connects thousands of banks around the world. The White House has been reluctant to immediately cut Russia from SWIFT, worried it could cause enormous economic problems in Europe and elsewhere in the Zelensky, who earlier cut diplomatic ties with Moscow and declared martial law, described Russian forces advancing on a series fronts, including a difficult situation, developing in Kharkiv, Ukraine's second-largest city, just over 20 kilometers away from the eastern border with Russia, and Russian troops slowly advancing from the north on the city of Chernihiv. He said a Russian airborne unit at an airport just outside Kyiv, the capital, was being destroyed. He appealed to global leaders, saying that, if you don't help us now, if you fail to offer a powerful assistance to Ukraine, tomorrow the war will knock on your door. Both sides claim to have destroyed some of the other's aircraft and military hardware, though little of that could be confirmed. Russian forces seized control of the now unused Chernobyl plant and its surrounding exclusion zone after a fierce battle, Zelensky adviser Mihailo Podolyak told the Associated Press. The Vienna-based International Atomic Energy Agency said it was told by Ukraine of the takeover, adding that there had been no casualties or destruction at the industrial site. IAEA Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi called for maximum restraint to avoid actions that could put Ukraine's nuclear facilities at risk. Earlier, a Ukrainian official told AP that Russian shelling hit a radioactive waste repository, with a reported increase in radiation levels. The official spoke on condition of anonymity to discuss the sensitive matter. The 1986 disaster occurred when a nuclear reactor at the plant 130 kilometers, 80 miles, north of Kyiv exploded, sending a radioactive cloud across Europe. The damaged reactor was later covered by a protective shell to prevent leaks. The chief of the NATO alliance said the brutal act of war shattered peace in Europe, joining a chorus of world leaders who decried the attack, which could cause massive casualties, topple Ukraine's democratically elected government and upend the post-Cold War security order. The conflict was already shaking global financial markets. Stocks plunged and oil prices soared amid concerns that heating bills and food prices would skyrocket. Condemnation rained down not only from the US and Europe, but from South Korea, Australia and beyond, and many governments readied new sanctions. Even Friendly leaders like Hungary's Viktor Orban sought to distance themselves from Putin. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said he aimed to cut off Russia from the UK's financial markets as he announced sanctions, freezing the assets of all large Russian banks and planning to bar Russian companies in the Kremlin from raising money on British markets.
Now we see him for what he is, a bloodstained aggressor who believes in imperial conquest, Johnson said of Putin. A senior U.S. official said the U.N. Security Council was expected to vote Friday on a resolution condemning Russia's attack and demanding an immediate withdrawal. The vote will proceed even though the legally binding measure will almost certainly be vetoed by Russia, said the official, who wasn't authorized to discuss the matter publicly and spoke on condition of anonymity. While some nervous Europeans speculated about a possible new world war, the US and its NATO partners have shown no indication they would send troops into Ukraine, fearing a larger war. They instead mobilized troops and equipment around its western flank, as Ukraine pleaded for defense assistance in help protecting its airspace. NATO reinforced its members in Eastern Europe as a precaution, and Biden said the U.S. was deploying additional forces to Germany to bolster NATO. The first attacks came from the air. Ukrainian authorities later described ground invasions in multiple regions, and border guards released video of a line of Russian military vehicles crossing into Ukraine's government-held territory. European authorities declared the country's airspace an act of conflict. It wasn't until late Thursday afternoon that Russia confirmed its ground forces had moved into Ukraine, saying they'd crossed over from Crimea, the southern region that Russia annexed in 2014. After weeks of denying plans to invade, Putin launched the operation on a country the size of Texas that has increasingly tilted toward the democratic west and away from Moscow's sway. The autocratic leader made clear earlier this week that he sees no reason for Ukraine to exist, raising fears of possible broader conflict in the vast space that the Soviet Union once ruled. Putin denied plans to occupy Ukraine, but his ultimate goals remain hazy. Ukrainians who had long braced for the prospect of an assault were urged to shelter in place and not to panic. Until the very last moment, I didn't believe it would happen. I just pushed away these thoughts, said a terrified Anna Dovnia in Kyiv, watching soldiers in. Police remove shrapnel from an exploded shell. We have lost all faith. With social media amplifying a torrent of military claims and counter-claims, it was difficult to determine exactly what was happening on the ground. AP reporters saw or confirmed explosions in the capital, in Mariupol on the Azov Sea, Kharkiv in the east and beyond. AP confirmed video showing Russian military vehicles crossing into Ukrainian-held territory in the north from Belarus and from Russian annexed Crimea in the south. Russia and Ukraine made competing claims about damage they had inflicted. Russia's defense ministry said it had destroyed scores of Ukrainian airbases, military facilities and drones, and confirmed the loss of a Su-25 attack jet, blaming pilot error. It said it was not targeting cities, but using precision. Weapons and claimed that there is no threat to civilian population. Ukraine's armed forces reported at least 40 soldiers dead, and said a military plane carrying 14 people crashed south of Kyiv. Poland's military increased its readiness level, and Lithuania and Moldova moved toward doing the same. Border crossings from Ukraine to Poland rose. Putin justified his actions in an overnight televised address, asserting the attack was needed to protect civilians in eastern Ukraine, a false claim the U.S. predicted he would make as a pretext for invasion. He accused the U.S. and its allies of ignoring Russia's demands to prevent Ukraine from joining NATO and for security guarantees, saying the military action was a forced measure. Anticipating international condemnation and countermeasures, Putin issued a stark warning to other countries not to meddle. In a reminder of Russia's nuclear power, he warned that no one should have any doubts that a direct attack on our country will lead to the destruction and horrible consequences for any potential aggressor. Inside Russia, authorities moved swiftly to crack down on any critical voices. OVD Info, a group that tracks political arrests, reported 1,620 people in 52. Russian cities had been detained for protesting the invasion, more than half of them in Moscow. Among Putin's pledges was to denazify Ukraine. World War II looms large in Russia, after the Soviet Union suffered more deaths than any country while fighting Adolf Hitler's forces.
The Kremlin has portrayed members of Ukrainian right-wing groups as neo-Nazis, exploiting their admiration for World War II-era Ukrainian nationalist leaders who sided with the Nazis. Ukraine is now led by a Jewish president who lost relatives in the Holocaust and angrily dismissed those claims. Hours before the invasion, Zelensky rejected Moscow's claims that Ukraine poses a threat to Russia and made a passionate plea for peace. Isachenkov and Litvinova reported from Moscow. Angela Charlton in Paris. Gare Molson and Frank Jordans in Berlin. Raf Kassert and Lauren Cook in Brussels. Nick. Dmitrykian Mariupol, Ukraine, Ina Varenitsia in eastern Ukraine, and Robert Burns, Matthew Lee, Amr Madani, Eric Tucker, Noman Merchant, Ellen Nickmeyer, Zeke Miller, Chris Magarian and Darlene Superville in Washington contributed. Follow app's coverage of the Ukraine crisis at https colon slash slash apnews.com slash hub slash Russia Ukraine.